Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Resident Evil style game in Unity and welcome to episode 14. In this tutorial we're going to create that little glow that we have when items can be picked up and obviously that can be customised to how you want it to be. And we're also going to look at expanding this actual area so it isn't this L shape, we want a little bit more over here and that's going to require a little bit more work on some of the components in the scene itself. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload to this channel in this series. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So, we are going to have a weapon that we can pick up. And I'm just going to turn the post-processing off there. So, I think we should probably have it maybe here. So, this little crate here perhaps has a gun that we can pick up. Uh, so, we'll probably bring the gun in next tutorial. But firstly, let's create that little glow. Now there's a couple of ways you can do it, uh, mainly through a particle system, obviously there are different ways, perhaps with a shader. A uh, particle system is probably the easiest and quickest way of doing it, it's also highly customizable, especially for beginners. So, game object, and then let's go down to um, effects, right there, and particle system. So we've dealt with particle systems before, and generally the one we did was just kind of floating about wasn't it because it was the particles in the air that we were creating so i'm going to bring this uh particle system all the way into my scene and yeah it looks nothing like the glow that we're going to have at the moment so we just need to bring it in line with our little crate so we'll have it probably about there so how do we actually change all of these crazy particles going up into that nice glow easy it is so easy. It's all done basically with numbers. So we could change the duration, for example, to one and change the start lifetime to one. And obviously it would only last a second. Now you would logically think that, yep, yeah, that glow could last about a second. However, we need to then change the start speed to zero. And if I bring it up, you can see exactly what is going on. So we're getting closer to our desired effect, but it's not quite how we want it. We now need to go to our emission right there. Right over time, for example, you could set as one. Yes, it's still lurking around in different places. However, if we go to shape, we can actually refine how that looks. So for example, if we change the radius to zero completely, you'll see that, that glow now stays in one specific place, which is kind of helpful. So, how do we give it that kind of glowing effect? Well, you think about how it works in the games. It doesn't display and all of a sudden it kind of flashes quite quickly. In some of the games it flashes a bit slower. So we are going to work with both of those and show you how you can do that. So let's get rid of the emission and the shape. The one we need is size over lifetime. So if we click size over lifetime and then tick it, You'll see it's almost doing what we need to do. So we then need to change this down here, change the curves. So we need it to be basically nothing, come on full and then fade. So if I bring this key all the way down and then add a key and bring that key all the way up. So I've just right clicked. You can see it's now doing exactly what we would expect it to do, that glow. Now, there is another way of dealing with this. You could have it that way if you wanted to. Some games do indeed have it kind of like that. Uh, you could always play around with adding another key. So if we add another key and keep that key down here and bring this key over here and this one here, you can see that the kind of effect is quicker than what it was previously. You can also control that by changing the lifetime and duration. So if we change it to two and two, it behaves that way. And again, you can change that to, let's say five. And it behaves in a slightly different manner, but still to the same respect that you would expect it to. So generally what I would say is probably have it as two and two. I think that's what I want to go for, realistically. So we're not going to see it now because we've clicked off it. We need to go into the game view and let's see if we can see it. And we can over there. 
So now that looks like there is an item there, which is exactly what we want. So I think that's a pretty decent effect for what we need it to be. And honestly, I think you could play around with it a little bit more and get it how you want it to be. You don't necessarily have to do it exactly how Resident Evil does it. You don't necessarily have to do it exactly how I do it. I think it's all about how you want it to be. This is your game after all. So let's move on a little bit um, because I think we might actually move that from where our gun is to a little area down here because we don't want to kind of run past the zombie without a gun just yet. So we need to expand this area a little more. Now, as I said earlier, there are a couple of restraints that we have to deal with in the components of this scene to enable us to be able to expand this scene. One of the things is cameras, another one is lighting, and the other is where the zombie can walk. Because if you remember, if we go on navigation, the zombie can only go up to here. And if we expand this further, the zombie won't be able to get through, and we need him to. So, firstly, let's get rid of that wall. Okay? Next, we already have this set up round here, which is kind of lucky for us. So when we placed the walls originally, this was already set for us because we dealt with this wall. So we're going to have it expanding around this area too. And all I'm going to do is bring out this floor to about there and then fill in the rest of the area. Now you'll notice this wall in particular looks like it's upside down. Not anymore, it's not. All I've done is just change the rotation on the Y. Not sure why it was minus 90 to begin with, but either way, we have it nicely aligned now. So I'm going to take that, or control, press D, and just bring it across. Now this is probably a great time to note that there are multiple ways of actually creating uh, levels and scenes within Unity. Uh, I am just going for the simple block method right now, uh, at least for this portion of the series, simply because it's quickly done. It's easy. There's no, you know, you don't have to worry about it too much, I guess. Uh, so let's bring the ceiling over as well. So we've quickly expanded this area. Now, what we need to do is we need to work with cameras. But actually, let's bring this light over here. Let's duplicate this point light and bring it over here. Now, you shouldn't have too many issues when it comes to lights in Unity, especially in scenes of this caliber, because we only have three lights. Uh, you could probably have multiple lights within a scene. Most um, computers these days can handle quite a lot. You're not going to affect any of the power of this at all. You're not going to have any frame rate issues. You're not going to have any performance issues. You're not going to have anything with just three lights. You could probably have about 10 and still uh, have no issues at all. So let's set our next camera. So this camera let's duplicate so hold control press d and i'm going to bring that back into the section up above let's have that there rename it to camera four and then i am going to move it into a position where i can see this entire area and i'm sure i said it before generally these resident evil games with the cameras they won't have consecutive back uh panels I'm sure I said it earlier in the series. So you will go from one camera to the next camera and still be looking at the back of the uh, character. That's just fundamentally how Resident Evil was not done. So I'm going to turn this camera to about there and bring it back into the wall so we can get a bit of a, a fuller view of this scene. So let's pull it out and pull it out. I need to pull that. That's not quite. Am I pulling the right way? Because I need to pull it this way, don't I? And this way. So I am going to rotate a little more, like so. I feel like I probably wasted a bit too much time planning where this camera should go. But I'm going to have it about there. Obviously, you take a little bit more time than you need. So if you remember the triggers, these ones right here, I am going to take um these two so trigger uh one forward and back hold control press d and let's bring them into a bit more of a reasonable position so probably about here let's bring them back to where they should be about there 
and rename them. Obviously, naming conventions in Unity are so important. I really can't stress that enough. It helps you find things better. It really does. So that has been renamed to what we want. So back, forward, back, forward. So it doesn't matter which order we actually have it in, because if we're going backwards from where we are right now, we need back. So if we're coming back, we need to turn on camera four. And then we need to turn off camera one. And let's disable camera four. Then obviously, if we're going forward again, we need to turn on camera one and off camera four. So let's press play. And let's try this out, just make sure this all works as intended. So there's our starting position. Let's head back and there we go. So I'm going to stand here for just a moment uh, because the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to demonstrate to you why it happens. Um, I'm going to go back to my scene view. We should see our zombie coming through. Here he comes. We should see him come around the corner any second. See his creepy shadow. And he has now stopped there. He's not going to come any further forward than that, no matter how much you want him to. Remember before when I showed you the navigation? That's the reason. We need to expand that navigation to allow our zombie to come further. Uh, before we do, I'm actually going to move uh, this crate and the weapon uh, particle system. So that one, oops, helps if I keep it selected. That one and that one. And I'm going to bring it into this section of the scene so we can easily pick it up. So let's have that there. That should do the trick. In fact, I might actually reduce the collider on this because it does appear to be a little big, don't you think? So 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, still a bit big. 0.7, 7, 7. seven. Mm, that should do the trick. Okay, so everything is in order there now. So let's deal with our navigation again. So we need to expand it to be this section here. So let's click this section of the floor. Let's click on navigation and then let's click bake and bake. It's as simple as that. That's all it really takes to expand your navigational area. So our zombie now has the ability to come all the way around here to greet us because he's such a nice zombie. So let's just make sure that works as expected. Let's turn ourselves around. There we go. Let's give it a moment for him to come by. Let's have a look at the scene, see where he is. Is he coming? Yeah, he's coming. He's on his way. He's on his way. That shadow is rather creepy. Here he comes lurching forward to get us. And you can already see that he is now in that area that we are. Perfect. So, although it's seen, I think it's been a bit of a short tutorial, this one, I think. Um, we've learned some nice things here, some useful things, I think. I particularly like that glow. Um, to give it a bit more insight, that glow without the post-processing may not look as good as intended. I think it's the post-processing that really brings it out. Speaking of post-processing, uh, we did it a couple of tutorials ago. However, it has since changed, uh, but I do have a nice up-to-date version of the new post-processing on my channel. I actually like it a lot better than the one we used in this video. So I may kind of revisit it at some point in this series because I feel it's much more intricate and much more fun to play with. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to have a gun on here and we're going to be able to pick that up. That also means that we're going to have to start looking at some UI. For example, our menu. So pick the gun, we can arrange things around. That is going to be a long process. It's not going to be something that we can do in one tutorial. It's not going to be something that we'll do straight away. It's something we're going to start off with and gradually build as we do other things throughout the game. So 
until that next tutorial guys thank you very much for watching